All right. Hello there. So, as you know, new champion released on the PvE. And as a passionate mid laner, I've seen a lot of people not really doing things that to me are like obvious optimizations. I'm not bagging on these players because his kit is kind of overwhelming. But I would like to think that with the research I've done on this character just in the training room, I know quite a bit about how to optimize him on a beginner level. Of course, he's only been out on the PvE for like, what, two, three days? So it's a bit hard to say how much or how well I've optimized him, but I'd like to show you all my discoveries. And I hope if you were on the fence about trying Hey or intimidated by Huey, I said, hey, I'm sorry. If you're intimidated, don't worry about it. I got you covered. This is a great guide that can help you get started on the philosophy of Huey and just how to play him in general because he's probably the most fun I've ever had with this game since like they released Zoe. So without further ado, let me pull up my visuals, my janky visuals. And let's start with a quick introduction of Huey. I'll have timestamps for everything so that if you want to skip to a certain part like combos, me describing his abilities and whatnot, you can go ahead and feel free to skip around. After all, this guide is for how you want to use it. I just present it a certain way. So let's look. Who's Huey? Huey, mid lane artillery burst mage. He has good peel, strong engages, high range damage, and he's very free. You get, you can use every single one of his abilities. It's not like, oh, he has 10 abilities, but only two are useful. No. All 10 of his abilities have a place in his kit, and they all work together. He's very mechanically difficult, I will say, because you have to have precise button presses. You can't press an ability twice, or you'll switch into the wrong mode. But I promise you, he's worth it, and he's loads of fun. Now, boom. A lot of people seem to wonder about his abilities. Feel free to pause and read any of the slides I show you. I did make a slideshow to help me out with the visuals. So you can pause here, and if not, all right, let me show you, because a lot of people are better just seeing it in action. So you got his passive, which you've already seen all of his abilities. But to give you the basic rundown, instant damage is QQ. Execution damage, which here, let me show you, has an incredibly long range. And some people I've seen unable to determine how you get bonus damage. You can get bonus damage if somebody is alone. So here, let me show you. Versus alone. You can see one crit, one didn't. Or you can get the bonus damage from someone being CC'd. Okay, you see right there, I'm just bad at the game. But you can proc it on any CC. Because you see, this one did not receive increased damage, but this one did. So that's how you proc the bonus damage. And then you have QE, which does the most damage, but it's over time. This is your main wave clear ability. This is your main just like instant poke. And this is your big execute. Okay, simple enough. Now you have his W stuff. Movement speed. That's omnidirectional. So it doesn't just go in one direction. A shield. Whoops. A shield. That increases the longer you stay in it. And this. Basically, it's Nami E. It's a self buff that restores more mana than it costs. Let me show you. Look at how much mana I have, right? Restores more than it costs. And then you have E. So you have Straight Line Skill Shock Fear. So, uh, he sets up a zone trap that latches onto a target, and a claw that pulls people together. And it is always parallel to Huey. Boom. And then you have his big ultimate, which just is similar to Fizz or Varus. It's an isolation ultimate. So if he hits someone, the people are probably all going to be like, oh no, I don't want any part in that. And they're going to run away. Now let's review some more of Wei's abilities in detail. Because there are a few ways to look at it. You can look at it as, oh, he's QW, he's Q, and then QQ, QW. But there's another way to look at it. And that's for what each X plus Q does. So like all of his stance plus Qs, if you notice, are all straight line skill shots. 
One thing you want to remember about Hui is he's not here to confuse you. Hui is here to help you. So you'll notice all his W secondaries are zone targets. They're free target on the ground and they create a zone. And then his E is the unique one. So you have straight line for this one, self buff, whoops, you saw nothing, and claw. And you'll notice that he's in themes of threes a lot, so this will help you remember. And then you'll see in this one you have the damage, the crowd control, and the unique. So his E secondary is unique and his W primary is unique. Just remember that. You don't need me to go over his ultimate. You're fine. Let's go into itemization. Okay, so Huey can pick through a lot of items. I know we just started the season, kind of, so it's like, you know, it's kind of early to be deciding this. So this is just some early thoughts that I have on the champion. You can take anything I say with a grain of salt, especially because this is all PvE. I'm just trying to get out a beginner guide to help people get started and innovating with this character. So I have the basic stuff. Dorn's obvious. I would say Dorn's shield is kind of stupid, but I wanted to mention it because I, I wanted to mention a few things that I think are traps on this character, things that may seem good, but they are not, I assure you. Ionian boost of lucidity, I'd say are a trap on this character. Look at his cooldowns. You see, they get down to like decently short, especially his Q. And his ultimate cooldown is atrocious, and that's fine. But CDR is not as useful on this champion compared to the burst. You want burst on this champion, I assure you. And the far sight is also useful on this champion because when you purchase it, which I am not high enough level to purchase it, it helps you land your ability. Let's say, imagine that control word wasn't there, or let's imagine that is the far sight. You land, you now can see them, and you can snipe. So it's very important to have far sight. You don't have to buy it immediately at level 9, I'm just showing you because, well, you need to be at level 9. Now let's review his other stuff. Boink, right here, mythic items. So I just showing you the icons and my current thoughts on them. So Caster's Companion is just old Luden's Echo. It's really good. And if you want to pause and read what it does through here, boom, that's what it does. And basically, old Luden's Echo, super good on him. I've seen people starting on Malignance on him, but here in the uh, image, I share my thoughts. It's strong on him, yes, but his ultimate already has such a ridiculously high cooldown at rank 1. There's no need to invest into it too much because it drastically drops between ranks. So once you hit level 11, you have more of a reason to invest into your ultimate. So I just say, hold off on that item until you're at least level 11. That's my grain of salt. That's my two, two cents. <laughs> if you couldn't tell, this is unscripted. Other items. Death Cap is a classic. Been in the game for the longest time. It's so much damage. You should be aiming to build this every game unless you're playing rather defensively. Wei has excellent scalings, although they may not be high individually, like... To some people, like only 70% and only what 60%, 70%. This one is really good though. This one's 110, but it's delayed. But he has four damage abilities, which means he will use more AP scalings than most champions who only have three, like maybe Lux or Zoe even has two, you know? So just keep that in mind with his AP scalings. Shadow Flame is a. It just got reworked, so if you would like to read what Shadowflame does, I'm blind. Here you go. And it now, as you can see, true damage and magic damage critically strike below 35%, and this is an XQ. So it has great synergy. Your QW will hit like a truck. I mean, like, as soon as you get someone low enough, there's no way for them to survive this with any combo. Shadowflame plus that. And also, even if you're not using that as your execute, your dot will still execute. So if you have someone stuck on your zone, let's say, 
that's going to start doing execute damage and burning even faster, which is a lot of damage. Last one I've seen is Storm Surge, which I will show you now. So it, I might just need to show you this one, actually, but I hope you pause to read it if you wanted to. I'll give you more time. You see? Okay, now, it's a little awkward, but basically... And you see that lightning strike? Yes, that's what that is. So, um, yeah, pretty nice, I'd say. That's pretty good. Um, the cooldown's a bit long. But it does a ton of damage, so you're really gonna like this one. However, it's not necessary to build every game IMO as much as Death Cap and the new Ludens's Caster's Companion. What I do like is that it's cheap. However, it don't give you mana like maybe Malignants would. Or if you start tier, Archangels will give you mana. And the shield from Seraph is really nice. But yeah, just sharing some thoughts. Um, let's see. Next item. Boink! Uh, for the choice items, I added a few. Every mage item pretty much can be built on Hue, with an exception of like Riftmaker, which isn't really a mage item, or Nasher's Tooth, whatever. I enjoy Leandri's, because if you notice something, he's got a burn. But he don't just got one, he's got two burns. So he can constantly apply Leandri's to help him further stack Dark Harvest, which... Is another thing I'll get into later. I think it's the next thing. Zonia's is really nice now. However, it got a lot more expensive, as you can see here. And the components are also more expensive. They're really expensive. So it's harder to build this item early. However, it's great into champs like Zed and Fizz, just to keep you safe. Oh, I keep alt having. Oh no. Okay, let's look here. Last item I wanted to give a shout out to. Void Staff got um, giga buffed and now gives 90 AP, so that's something special. So it's great into teams who stack like uh, MR. So let me show you some example builds. You're always going to build these boots no matter what. Typically you're going to have Death Cap, and typically you're going to build this one first, right? So around these, let's say they're all squishy, you could go for something like this, you know, with a choice item, like maybe this one. If they're building kind of tanky, you're going to sacrifice probably Shadow Flame, or maybe not Shadow Flame because it would execute damage. You might sacrifice Storm Surge because it's a bit of a burst item. And instead, go for like Double Burn with Leandries. If they're building lots of MR, you could even sacrifice um, Shadow Flame for Void Staff so you get like Giga Burn. Let me show you. You will get Giga Burn if you use your ultimate and QE. So then they'll be really burning because of the zone this one applies and the Leandri's burn. And that'll do lots of percent health damage, so it's great for cutting down tanks. And even QQ with its max health damage will be cutting down some tanks. So just keep those two like builds in mind, but just keep sort of this as your first item, as your like main idea, you know? <coughs> Next section now that we're done with items. So what do I build on my champion before I enter the game? Well. You have a few options, and it depends on your playstyle. I personally believe that Hui is a really strong late game, so Dark Harvest is quite an exceptional option, and he has a few things to help him proc it as well. It's so like QE's damage over time will proc it, his passive will proc Dark Harvest, so it's very easy to proc compared to other champions who don't have as many abilities. However, that does mean Electrocute is very easy to proc. When I say Electrocute is very easy to proc, I mean like, boom, you just procced Electrocute, you know? So just keep that in mind if you want more lane focus. However, I don't know if Hui is necessarily that great for lane focus. Arcane Comet, I have a few thoughts on this one. So if you look at Hui's passive, he needs to hit two abilities. And Arcane Comet is just a one-off poke. So you do this and Boom, the comet flew at them. Oh, look, it's comet. And that's great and all, but you're missing out on a lot of potential because 
that sort of playstyle does it you lose this you lose your entire passive for that playstyle so you don't get like juice you know because that right there will help you proc dark harvest so that's nice but that's just that's just my thoughts on comet you can take it if you want i don't like it personally first strike is another one it's really good to help you get ahead because way is like item hungry he wants stats 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 look at these scalings i'm not even showing them but like you see this you don't need to really read it to know way wants big stats because his base damages aren't the greatest compared to other champions so first strike is really going to help you however if you are against another champion who uses it better mm, let's say victor victor uses first strike so much better than you because his laser that goes through minions is a lot faster so you're gonna have a hard time proccing it with this or this against like victor so just that one's pretty matchup based and last one i wanted to give an honorable mention to unsealed spellbook because the koreans somehow always make that one work i hate it but i'm one person League of Legends players are so many more, so I wanted to give it a mention. So let's say you take... I'll explain why I have, like, trap runes in the bottom right corner. But let's go over the sorcery runes. Right here, you're going to see what I prefer. Uh, Manifold Band is great if you're taking sorcery as your secondary or, like, as your secondary or your primary. Because he does have a, he's a bit mana hungry, even with WE to help alleviate his mana problems. Mana flow ban is always welcome. It helps. Nullifying orb is okay, I'd say. It, I don't know. It's if you are in a struggle matchup. Like if you're fighting people who can easily out poke you or out damage you. Because keep in mind, you have 320 base movement speed, which I will mention later, but. I know it says 325, but that's because, boom. You have 320 movement speed. You are the slowest champion in the game. Besides unmounted Kled. So, yikes. <laughs> You're going to struggle a lot into high mobility matchups, especially AP ones. So that's why you want to take that nullifying orb. Transcendence, I put it here because CDR is always good. Way has some pretty long cooldowns. And just to not have to dedicate item spots to your... CDR is quite nice. I, oh, the Transcendence is quite nice to just constantly keep your W up. Next, we have... Oh, jeez. Uh, Absolute Focus. Way is a very long-range champion. Need I say more? So, you're not going to be too close to people. So, Absolute Focus you can take advantage of. Pretty good. Celerity I put here. It's kind of a troll on him. But it synergizes quite well with this one. So it makes him a bit harder to gank because the movement speed it gives you scales with ranking. So 20% is nothing to scoff at already. And Celerity will just boost that further and help you escape. Well, like I said, you are the slowest champ in the game. So getting access to bonus movement speed is always nice. However, it's kind of awkward and only really works with Relentless Hunter, I'd say. Otherwise, there's no point in taking it. And last, Gathering Storm. Need I say more? It's AP that scales with the duration of the game. Hui is going to appreciate that so much. Next, Domination, if you take it primary or secondary. Hui can proc Cheap Shot on every combo. Like, Cheap Shot was proc'd there. Or like this. Cheap shot was proc'd there. Cheap shot was proc'd there. You know, it didn't say it because it's on cooldown, but what I'm trying to tell you, you get free true damage every damn time you use an ability, pretty much. This character is kind of chock full of CC, so it's great. If you are in a struggling lane, though, you might gravitate more towards Taste of Blood just to help you survive. Um, that's it, really. And I wanted to go over all the hunters in depth. Like I said, this guide is in depth, but... So, you have all these options for the hunters, right? Uh, oh, I skipped over eyeballs. Blech. Eyeballs is the most reliable, in my opinion. But you got 
ultimate hunter, which his ultimate cooldown is long. Like it with ranks going down, it's not as long, but it's still like, whew, really. Goes down by 35 with each rank, which is so good. Or not 35, 25. But like still 140 at rank one is rough. So having that ultimate hunter can help alleviate that, especially when you stack it with building malignance as your like second or third item your ultimate cooldown will be really low compared to what people may be expecting and then a relentless hunter i like it as i mentioned again 320 base speed sucks so getting to move around the map more freely really helps especially if you're going to be helping your teammates in skirmishes because he has a lot of good skirmish tools that you can whip out so yeah and look, there's no active items to really use in Genius Hunter. I wanted to put it here to mention it. It's only good with Zonias. Yeah, it serves no other purpose now that they got rid of all the active items. So yeah, I, I don't know what else to say. And I didn't put Bounty Hunter here because it's pretty obvious. Huey loves items, so Bounty Hunter is just going to be good. But in my opinion, Ultimate Hunter is going to be a bit more consistent. For that ult cooldown. An inspiration tree, you're gonna look at the second icon and be a little confused. It's okay. We'll get there eventually eventually. Um but I did just leave the game because my practice tool closed, but I'll keep talking. Uh his boots. So like I said, he has awful movement speed. I say it quite a bit. Awful movement speed. However, it can be alleviated by using um these boots. However, that does mean in the lane, you ain't getting boots, so that might destroy you in the end. So it's kind of a gamble with that rune. If you don't get your boots like fast enough, like participate in these skirmishes, it's going to drain the life out of your character because you won't be able to move. Movement in this game is very important. Very, very important. And as you can see, time, the perfect timing rune I crossed out because, well, you don't need it anymore. It, it doesn't exist. It now turns into like an elixir. You can look up the rune. I'm I'm not displaying it as of now, but basically it gives you three potions. One makes you do more damage to minions, one makes you do adaptive force for a certain amount of time. So basically I want you to imagine um this potion. You can, oh, whoops. You just get this potion early on. It's pretty nice. And there you go. Um, for, oh, the last elixir you get, though, it gives you, um, it gives you an extra skill point. However, it doesn't let you max out, or it doesn't let you level up your ultimate early. Like, at level 10, you still need to wait till level 11, so Imo, kind of useless rune. I don't think it's going to be that good on Huey, at least. The biscuits? The biscuits are pretty good for Huey. Yeah. Struggles a fair bit in lane with mana if he's shoving, and he struggles a fair bit with people poking him down. So yeah, Dematerializer can help him get rid of cannon minions to just completely hard shove a wave if he's roaming or if he's backing. And last we have the trap runes. I'd say Precision and Cosmic Insight are kind of traps. He can't make use of what the CDR gives. Like, summer spells are uh, important, but he doesn't make use of the item CDR very well. I mean, he does with, like, Storm Surge, Zonias, and whatnot, but it just feels like, I don't know, kind of pointless on him to take inspiration just to go for the insight. If you're taking inspiration, it can work. I don't know. I wouldn't say go for it. And the entire precision tree, I'd say for Huey, is a trap. The only runes that would benefit you are like Coup de Gras and Presence of Mind. But you shouldn't need Presence of Mind on this champion. You should be using this ability as frequently as you can to alleviate your mana problems. And if they get bad enough, you get blue buff. You shouldn't have to waste an entire rune slot just for Presence of Mind. Yes? You good? Okay. Whoa, what's this controversial topic? Ability order. I wanted to show you the raw numbers. So for the first one, uh, 
you get better crowd control because the cooldown of the stuff on your E decreases. However, you have worse wave clear because you actually don't need your E for wave clear. Like, for wave clear, you can use this to amplify QE. Like, and then it helps you clear the minions faster. It's less effective, but it means you won't need to spend extra mana using this to clear the wave. You can just throw out QE with your W amplifier. And it does less damage, actually. It sounds wrong, but look at how much damage this one does. You can pause and read. In short, I tested it. It is less than E because you get three procs, and it's only the base damage that matters, not the scaling. So there. If you max W second, you will do more damage in your combos. It'll make your wave clear better. It'll alleviate your mana problems a bit more. I would just say go for QWE. QWE, I'd say, is better. If you are really struggling to peel yourself, QEW is worth it. But most of the time, if you have good positioning, you won't have to worry about maxing E until last. That's just my recommendation. And this, take a screenshot, you need to pause it. This is just some basic combos. I can show you them, which I don't really feel the need to. But basically, it's just a flow chart to help you start out your Hui combos. This is not an end-all, be-all list, um, but there. Point is, you see this, it's good. Uh, I'll show you some of them, so let's look. Let me pull up the window real quick. So for the squishy combo, um, you're going to WE before all your combos, just to make it easier for you. You'll get used to weaving in WE into your combos later, but for now, start with WE to amplify you. Use any E of your choice and QW if they're low HP, and boom, you get the instant damage increase. If they're not low HP, uh, you can go like, uh, what's it called? W E E of your choice, and then QQ for that instant burst. It'll be easier to land and more consistent. If you want, like against the tank, you can be like, blah, wah. And as you can see right there, that does the most damage out of all of them. Because QE does the most damage. But if you're trying to burst down a tank, this does max health damage. So, QQ is nice for the burst. And for peel stuff, this is where the creativity really comes in. Uh, here, let me show you the tab. The creativity for peel really comes in here with using W and then using your E. So in this situation, uh, we're in a choke point and your teammate is being chased down by somebody. And you have a few select choices to slow them down. If your teammate is not in immediate danger like this distance, you can do this and they'll run back to you faster. And to close down the choke point, you can use this. They can walk around it this way, but then that means they're forced to eat a spell. So just be creative with Wei. Always remember that. But let's say you just want them to instantly run away. Maybe it's a Master Yi. You can't slow him down. And now he's sprinting in the opposite direction, you know? Let's say your ally's in immediate danger. They're on 1 HP. EWW. Like, try to WW a bit closer to here so that they're running throughout the zone. But, boom. You know? Stuff like that. And if you're trying to CC multiple targets, you can throw this one out. And if you're desperate to say this person's very important, you can ulti. Very cool, yes? And they're slowed, so... Woohoo! You saved your teammate. Congratulations! Here's the flowchart once more if you wanted to take a look at it. The wave clear, don't mind me. I'm a little high. I forgot that uh, WE doesn't proc QE twice. It just procs it once. But that's okay. Because you will only need it. So, whatever. Anyway. Blink. So, these are the advanced combo section. Um, feel free to read through it if you want. But um, this goes into situational stuff, so let me show you. 
Sometimes there will be minions. And you need to hit people through these minions. I can't hit him with QQ at all. QW might not have him as an isolated target. So I'm going to go for QE, WE in between, and EE. And that hits him between the minions. Let me show you again. Q, E, W, E, E, E. And the reason why we do Q, E first is the element of surprise it provides. If you do this one first, like that, for example, you, you don't get the same, like, they're prepared to dodge E, you know? Whereas this one, they're prepared to dodge Q, so they're not prepared to dodge E, you know? Also, I did not cast the right spell because I have the thingy on. But it's a, quite a like subtle animation compared to like QQ, which is kind of out there. So it's the elements of surprise. We're catching them with throwing a slow under their feet, another slow. And as you can see, what I've been doing between these combos is you can weave WE in between. So it's not like, oh, I'm going to engage you. Oh, get ready for this combo, you know? Using WE preemptively just tells your opponent, I'm on my way to get you. Instead, that instead weave it in between your combos, like that. Boom, I procced it. My passive, my Q, and my E all procced it. I didn't have to worry about it. But it's all about that element of surprise. Boom, very fast. Let's say that was for the in-between. So like, in between a minion wave. Oh yeah, it does mention you need to be fast. You need to be fast with some of these combos to get WE's max value. If you have a clear shot and you want some burst damage, the highest instant damage combo is going to be EQ, WE, QQ, like this. You actually don't need the auto attack to proc all of your thingies as well. You can just like go straight into it. And let's say you're out of vision as well. You can preemptively proc this because these are pretty much cancelable into each other. They The animation almost doesn't even look like it exists. So you can get ready. Boom. Like that. As you can see though, it don't do as much damage. Like if that's a 6, six 9, 2. If I do Q, E, W, E, E, E. An auto attack. As you can see, a lot more damage. I did proc Dark Harvest, but you see the point, yes? A lot more damage. However, the instant is what the value in QQ is the instantaneous damage. Even though it does less damage than WQ and QE, instant damage is very important sometimes. And if someone is low enough HP, you just you whip that's when you whip out the QW. So this one, EW is quite big. It's hard to avoid this one. Boink. And it you can see that one didn't do that much damage at all, but if I add in a little more damage with my ultimate, you're going to see that it will do more damage than using like QQ. Let's use this one. I even weaved in an auto attack on that one. And it still didn't do as much damage. So yeah, QQ doesn't do that much damage. That's something I feel like people need to grasp. It's instant, and that's what's good about it. Take one more look. You good? Perfect. Let's move on. Boink. Extended fight combos. Very situational, but Wei can get two passive procs. Feel free to pause and read if you want to, but let me just show you what I mean. Let's start off a combo with WE to get my first proc of paint. Now I'm going to ultimate. I go to EW, so that at times after my ultimate explosion, and then I can do whatever I want again, and I get a second passive proc. This can work in reverse, with EW auto attack going last, but there are a few requirements to this. And the requirement is that EW has to be triggered by an auto attack. Otherwise, it'll look like this. Okay, that's great. Um, My second passive didn't proc. Look, they're still marked. 
but I don't have any WE charges that I can use to proc my passive again, so I'm out. I'm out of luck. So in these situations where you're just trying to do more damage than this person, but they're significantly tankier, maybe a bruiser or a flat-out tank, space out your abilities. Have patience. They're walking up to you. Use that. Boom. You proc your passive once already, and then you throw out your other abilities, and you proc it again. You just need to have patience, take time, and remember, WE auto attack is the only way to make WE count as a spell. Otherwise, you don't get it. So you have to end your combo with WE or start it with WE and wait. That's the key ingredient. All right, here we're getting into philosophy. Laning. Just pause and read this if you want, or I'll give you the TLDR. Your damage early, kinda ass. He can work in short trades using this, because the shield does more damage than a lot of people's abilities. And you can also go for cutesy short little stuff like that. And you walk away. However, it takes a fair bit of your mana, because, you know, if you've used this as your shield, suddenly you're down half your mana pool. Right? Okay. And remember your lane trading combos. They hit through the wave. Right? But that's also your wave clear combo. Just press this and this. And the wave is going to be gone. At like... Once you get up to around level 6 or 7, if you use this, QE, and then you QE the wave again, you're going to get um, the back line minions dead and the front line minions almost dead. So he has excellent shove. Like, this character has crazy wave clear. And once you get boots and higher health, so like after level 9, during that big game transition, you can start going for actual fights. Like... Because now you have some items under your belt, you're going to be doing a lot more damage. Quay may not feel like he does a lot of damage, but that's because his damage is backloaded. His, like, think about it. His big explosion, backloaded. His biggest damage, basic ability, is delayed. You know? So this one, you have to wait for it to explode. But people probably aren't going to be ready for how much damage you actually do. Because you do a lot. Especially since he's new and it's like early game, people aren't expecting it. If you just look, read the numbers, he's going to kill you. That will kill you. Like early game, that will kill you. Just keep that in mind. Alright. Doink. But mentioning the philosophy. You need to keep an open mind on this character. Every ability has its place. Referring to the combo chart is okay, but it's not the end all. Boom. Pause and read if you want. So, the main things you're gonna see in skirmishing team fights, you can call, you can pick people out really well. His ultimate's not the fastest projectile, or it's a rather fast projectile, but the delay can make it a bit awkward to land. However, it slows for a lot. It slows for um, 120%, it says. So, um, okay. Yikes, that's a cripple. That is a crippling slow. And then on top of that, you can delay this so that it latches onto them after. And you've completely locked down a target just by yourself. So you can start fights like that. But let's say your teammates got it, your teammates engaging. Well now you can whip out the big damage. If they're all like grouped up, throw out your AoE stuff, you know? They're all grouped together. Maybe you have like a Malphite, you know, and he engages. You see how much damage that does? Your passive is AoE too. So it will hit all of them. Do a ton of damage. So you gotta remember to keep a just an open mind. But also, remember that peel situation? Quay is also a peel champion. Her self peel isn't the greatest, because it's kind of difficult to manage, but remember, you have ways to help people on your team get out of sticky situations. 
something like that, half the damn lane is impossible to walk through. Because if they walk through here with your teammate, it ulti. So just remember, Quay is very flexible. Quay is here to save you. Quay is here to support you, not to confuse you. Boink. Oh, we're at the end. In conclusion, I'm going to read this out loud so you can just click off now. Consider giving this video a like if it helped you out. But Quay is the most fun I've had with a champion since the release of Zoe in 2017. I've loved other champions like Lux and Vex, but nothing compares to the champions who allow the players to set themselves free and be creative. Quay is a great champion to show off mechanical prowess that doesn't follow a chart, like perfect counting on ADCs, you just right click, right click, right click, right click. You know, you, for this champion, making the perfect choice is hard, and sometimes there's not even a perfect choice. And I praise Riot for this. His design and gameplay wise and visual wise, it's incredible. I've never been more excited to play League than this champion alone. An updated guide covering the live release of Huey is on the way on this channel. So maybe when season 2024 actually launches, I will release an update on more philosophies I've discovered with this champion. I know this guy was a bit long, but if you want to just get started on this champion, only look through like the basic timestamps, you know? Right? I should have said at the beginning. Whatever. Point is, I hope you enjoy this. I put a lot of effort into it because I'm very passionate about this champion. I'm very passionate about teaching people. And I hope you have fun with Huey because he is fun. And with that out of the way, thank you so much. Expect maybe some Huey gameplay content on this channel. I don't upload too much gameplay, but who knows, especially with this champion coming out. Just have fun. Goodbye. <laughs>